the Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress, America's first all-metal, four-engine heavy bomber. The B-17 flew a range of 2,000 miles, carrying a three-ton bomb load. It defended against enemy fighters with 30 caliber machine guns, 13 of them, two at the waist on either side, four each in nose, top, belly, and tail turrets. The B-17s dropped more bombs during World War II than any other aircraft. They saw action in the Pacific, leveling, crippling attacks on the Japanese carrier fleet in the decisive Battle of Midway, June 1942. On March 6, 1944, 800 B-17s, under escort by 811 P-38 and P-51 fighters, mounted a daily mission over Berlin, forming a 90-mile bomber stream that took 30 minutes to pass. That day, Reich Marshal Hermann Goering, Luftwaffe Chief of Staff, conceded Germany would lose the war. The B-24 Liberator had more range than the B-17 and could carry more ordnance. B-24s were deployed in every theater of action during World War II and became the mainstay of the U.S. Bombardment Force. They flew treetop missions over Nazi petroleum and oil refineries at Plasti, Romania that helped disable the German war machine. After the war, the B-24 unit became the 93rd Bombardment Wing, assigned to Castle Air Force Base, Atwater, California. Only 20 B-24s remain from the original 18,500, half of which had been manufactured at Ford Motors Plant 31, Willow Run, Michigan, using Henry Ford assembly line techniques. At its production peak, Plant 31 constructed a B-24 every 63 minutes. The Liberator, on display at Castle Air Museum, was recovered in La Paz, Bolivia in the early 1980s. It was shipped in parts to Atwater for reassembly and restoration, a project that took eight and a half years. I'm uh, Eldred Speck. I uh, flew with a B-24 uh, and flew the ball turret. It was in the uh, 15th Air Force based in Italy. Flying in the B-24 was not a luxurious trip. It was not like a 747. The airplane was entirely uh, not pressurized. We would uh, put on oxygen masks when we got to about 10,000 feet. And we wore the oxygen mask all through the, most of the trip. We flew over the Alps, and it was extremely cold. I believe at one time, the temperature was recorded at uh, 68 below zero. All of, all of the gunners would get into our turrets at about 9,000 feet uh, to test fire our guns. The ball turret gunner had a uh, Browning 50 caliber gun almost at each ear. My hearing isn't too good today yet. It hasn't improved. These uh, flights ran about seven hours. And uh, seven hours at that altitude with uh, an oxygen mask on uh, got pretty boring, except for certain interruptions. First, we, we would get a, um, a report of fighters in the area. Fortunately, while I was there, we had better air cover for so P-38s and uh, 51s mostly. It wasn't quite as deadly as the boys of 43 out of England. That was a, just a stark disaster. Ours was bad enough. But we would be warned, and uh, when the fighters came in, you hated to admit it, but you, you hoped that they, would, and that they hit the other group instead of yours, but uh, it didn't always work that way. When they would come in, everybody would be watching from his position. Mine was a little unusual because I would see what was happening below the airplane. At one time, we went to uh, the flak over uh, Vienna, which was one of the worst targets in all of Europe, very heavily defended. And uh, we came in at about 22,000, right, about 22,000 feet as I recall, but there were other aircraft that had gone over at a higher altitude. And uh, not only did we get the black from the exploding shells, but we actually had to fly through the shrapnel that was falling from, a, from above. We came back from that one, uh, they condemned our airframe. So it was, it was 
there wasn't a place that you couldn't see out of, so. Well, the most I can say it was excitement I could have done without.